Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today's sketchbook doodles video, I am obviously painting Kaya, as you can probably tell from the thumbnail or the title of today's video. But um, I just wanted to give my wrist a little bit of break and painting actually doesn't put a lot of strain on my hand, um, which is kind of the reason why I did the entire sketching session off screen. So past sketchbook doodle videos where I've done gouache paintings, I would show you guys the clean sketch on camera, but because I was trying to make sure I wasn't straining my hand, I wanted to take my time and not film it so that I could draw at a proper angle, but also take my time so that I'm not fully straining my hand because sometimes when I'm doing cleaner lines or I need more control, I do have a more stronger grip. So yeah, this is the painting session for today, but I think the painting session was quite long and it's a little bit different from just the usual headshots that I usually do in my sketchbooks that are little kind of like tiny, little maybe like three by three inches or something, two by two inches. Kaya here is a lot larger this time. So yeah, so let's talk about process a little bit and then we'll jump into a bit of painting struggles or anything that's going on currently. So let's start with process. So as usual, I did my initial sketch with the kind of red mechanical pencil that I usually use. And this is kind of allowing me to sketch freely and not care about being messy. And then I will take a kneaded eraser, kind of lift up any of the lines that I think are not necessary as well as lightening the sketch so I can prepare it for the just a normal mechanical pencil to do the clean sketch. And the reason why I do that is because the pilot color, you know, tends to dissolve in water or it will fade in sunlight. So I just like using it for rough sketching. And then I don't really care if it gets picked up by the watercolor or covered by anything else, but because it can be dissolved by water and I'm painting with watercolor and gouache that are, is primarily like activated by water and stuff, right? I don't want my sketch to be fully dissolved and I won't be able to know where I'm painting. So I do a clean sketch with a mechanical pencil so I have an idea where my lines are. And then now I'm painting with watercolor. And after when I'm done painting with watercolor, I will move on to gouache. So the reason why I use watercolor before I use gouache and I don't use gouache like throughout the whole piece. The reason why I use watercolor is because I have a better sense of color when it comes to watercolor, like mixing colors and stuff with watercolor more than gouache. And I think it's because like I'm more used to my, than my current palette for watercolor. And it kind of helps me to do two things, I guess. It helps me put a base color down so that I don't have any whites, white of the paper showing through. And then the other reason is because the watercolor kind of helps let the gouache have something to bind to. Now, moving on to gouache, as you can see, I am struggling painting his um, skin. And it's mostly because the consistency of the paint that I use, it, it was like, I didn't get the right consistency, basically. So when I was painting Kaya, I made him too red. So I diluted my paint and added a little bit more yellow into it. And then I got the wrong consistency. So he came out really patchy. So I literally took him, like I ran with my sketchbook to my bathroom, took out my hair dryer to dry the page like immediately. So I could try to cover it up because I knew knowing my brain, if I left that patchy skin tone, on his face and then moved on i would have been super unhappy and then i probably would have gave up on the piece and once again i'm going over his skin with a little bit of a kind of like a pinker tone to it just because his face looked too sunburnt and you'll see me knock back the shadow a little bit with more of a it's kind of like the same skin tone both a little bit of purple into it or a more muted color so it comes out a little bit less saturated and I thought that fit him a little bit better. I didn't want it to be overly orange because there's a lot of orange in the whole piece anyways. Um, but yeah, that was a little bit of a struggle that I was having with painting Kaya this time around. Um, I think it's also because when I laid down the watercolor on this paper, I didn't match his skin tone correctly. So I was trying to correct it while doing the gouache, which was a mistake. Um, but yeah. I had a lot of fun painting Kaya and I feel like the reason why I wanted to paint Kaya in my sketchbook was because one, obviously I wanted to give my hand a rest and I wanted to work in my sketchbook a little bit. Um, but two was because I saw these orange flowers 
or not even orange flowers, one single orange flower on Pinterest. And I clicked on it and I couldn't find the name of it and nor was Pinterest suggesting anything that looks remotely the same. I got a lot of different like bell looking flowers that were orange, but they were not the same flowers that I was looking at. And so I tried my best to draw multiple flowers that look like this flower, but because I only had one reference, I wasn't entirely sure what the center of the flower looked like so i made almost all the flowers that i drew on this page facing the same direction or the center part being like somewhat covered by the petals that are curling up because i didn't want to paint them too weirdly if i didn't know what flowers they are i guess it really doesn't help because i can't tell you guys what flower it is because i couldn't find the the name because usually when i find references of flowers and stuff Either one of the references that I have of that specific flower will have the name of it, for, for, but for some reason this one did not. I don't know if it's because like it was just like a random photo taken from a different website and a person just put like a, a different caption or something for the title and it was really different. Um, but yeah, so I really, really, really loved this orange flower a lot just because like I believe the background that it was kind of on had a little bit of red and had this kind of like beautiful teal blue color and I am a sucker. Like I'm not even joking when I say I love seeing like teal and brown, teal and orange, teal and peach, turquoise and red, blues and yellows, blues and like gold. I love that kind of color combination and it all stems from the contrast and the complementary colors of like blue and orange, right? Um, but when I saw the flowers and then I saw a little bit of a kind of like turquoisey background, I was like, this would match Kaya quite nicely. If not, like at least it'll look quite pretty um, because like, Initially, I would probably have done something a little bit more with the floral aspect around Kaya, but I I sketched Kaya first entirely and I forgot about adding in the flowers. So this is why it's kind of like awkwardly placed. Like he has a single flower peeking out from his left side of his neck, but then all the flowers are on the right side behind his um, fluffy little, I don't know what that thing is, the bismage looking fluffy stuff, but yeah. But yeah, that's kind of the reason why the flowers look a little out of place and if I planned it out better, I think I could have worked in the colors a little bit better because I could have pulled out more of his blues from his outfit and maybe even leaned it towards his turquoisey, like turquoise dark tealish hair color that would have made the orange stand out even more but for something in my sketchbook, I actually really liked it so um, we're not gonna be too picky today. <laughs> So, um, I think one of my favorite parts painting was flowers, obviously, and then the next thing was his hair. His hair turned out pretty cute, in my opinion. I did go back and add a lot more highlights and stuff afterwards, but I feel like the consistency of paint that I had for his hair was just nice to work with, and I mixed enough paint that I could have done his whole hair, and I decided to add a little bit of white, as you can see, to my mixture and added a little bit more of a kind of like a lilac color so I could push it towards a more muted blue rather than the turquoise so I could have a little bit of less prominent shines and then I'm adding that little streak of I don't know what color that is that little streak of Kaya's hair that comes down I really like it I don't know I am uh, I keep saying like he's one of my favorite characters that were I don't know how to explain it usually. Like he has a soft spot in my heart, I guess, because he was always on my team. But I, I think I really do like Kaya's character in general though. Like even if he's a little flirty and a little bit, yeah, I don't really mind, honestly. He Like his design to me is very cool. And like, I don't know, his long hair, but like, I'm gonna say it now, rat tail. Like I don't mind it. <laughs> I think it's really pretty the way how they have it kind of styled and then he has a piercing, like a giant earring. His overall like attire is very like formal, but also a little bit like, I don't know. I, I just really like Kaya <laughs> and I feel comfortable drawing him, I think more and more recently. So hopefully you guys don't mind if I draw Kaya a little bit more. <laughs> I might like, I don't know. I think it'd be fun to do something with the Knights of Avonius. Maybe do a set portraits of them or something because I did mention the other video that I really enjoyed drawing Albedo and him and Albedo, like 
if I have orange and gold flowers for Kaya, then I could have teal flowers and like really bright blue flowers for Albedo. And I'm just excited just because like I think it matches them. Like for Albedo, I can imagine so many like beautiful teal or like glass looking flowers or something. Something really pretty and blue or like turquoise or mint. I think will fit Albedo a lot just because he has a lot of more like gold. He has a lot of black and like yellow and stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm a sucker for those color palettes as you can tell. Like you can tell immediately, I guess. Because like even Masaki's design is very much like brown and like turquoise, I guess. But they're closer to mid-tones. Like I don't have a high contrast in terms of value for Masaki's design. But I think it kind of works out just because like Masaki in general is kind of more of a like more of a softer character. I didn't really want to have something that like punches out at you in terms of color. Um, and like Sato who has kind of like a higher contrast. She has like a lighter shirt, super dark long skirt and then dark accents around her and her hair is quite light. And then same with Koji is a little bit more, he has like punchier colors in general. <laughs> but hmm, I don't know what else to talk about. Um painting process maybe. So when I was painting the flowers, the thing that I have difficulty with with gouache is that working dark to light for me is a little bit harder as well as being not being able to blend things as well. I feel like it works for my style when I'm painting people because I can have that higher contrast and things don't have to be super smooth, right? Because the way how I have Kaya's shadow on his face or like the hair it works if it's a little bit blocky a little bit chunky right but then as soon as i work with foliage or flowers i want to have more natural brush strokes but for me ideally i would have loved if things were just melded together super nicely and that's what i can get a little bit more from watercolor so it was a struggle for me to find a way how i worked with the flowers but then i remembered that when I do flowers like these, sometimes line work does help because I'm not aiming for realism here. I'm aiming for something still a little bit more delicate, but like line work helps bring that clarity that I like. And because I work with pencil and sometimes pen, I know where to push the values a little bit more in terms of doing line work. So like a lot of corners or anywhere that like lines meet and stuff I can make with make it darker and it kind of has that nice graphic kind of contrasting look towards certain colors and stuff and I think it kind of works out um yeah but I feel like this is one of the first times I painted something so large in my sketchbook I feel like I usually take myself as a person who's very scared of painting large with a opaque medium I've painted super large stuff like with gouache maybe ones like i think i have one kaya one that's maybe on par or a little bit bigger than this one but like that's it that's all i've done in the past i've done like acrylics and oils really large like our smallest size where i think was like 24 by 30 or something i don't remember how small we were allowed to work if it wasn't like a study but uh, we worked really large like a lot of our canvases or mason night boards or whatever were fairly large like i think mm, i think three foot by four foot or four foot by five foot was a lot of our paintings and we had to do a lot of still life portraits or still life poses and stuff so like i know i can work big is this my confidence level for gouache especially is very very tiny so i think it's okay for me to experiment a little bit more in my sketchbook before i fully commit to something like a gouache piece that's on maybe a larger more finished piece of paper i don't know i have a lot of like spare large watercolor paper that i've saved up from my uni days and i've kept them because they were expensive but they're also like i think 600 gsm or something something crazy thick right and they don't need to be taped down because of how thick they are so I don't know I'm saving them for a special occasion because I think I only have three sheets of them but I'd probably definitely be cutting them down if I ever use them I don't know I don't know what I'll use them for not too sure I feel like I love working on a smaller scale just because the brushes that I use the paint that I have are all on the smaller scale and if I were to work larger I'd be like eating away at 
the minimal gouache that I have. Like even right now, um, the amount of white gouache paint that I use for my pieces is quite a bit. So I feel like I need to invest in a separate white gouache tube that isn't the one I use for like my watercolors because like I have my M. Graham and Co. which I use like strictly for my watercolors because I will slowly dip my script brush into there and just like use it straight from the tube and I don't really like using it for actual gouache pieces because I don't really like mix like mixing and matching too much if I'm not for sure how it like if I'm not sure how it works but yeah also I think earlier you guys saw me show you guys that jar. It's like my new favorite thing at the moment. So me and my brother were making like boba and we were trying to look for syrups and stuff that could work with mixing with green teas or like any kind of like white tea and stuff because me and my brother like drinking like teas and we bought this Korean peach um, passion fruit tea and or not peach, mango passion fruit tea syrup stuff and it's really nice and it works well but it has all these passion fruit seeds in it so it didn't really work for boba so i just drank it with normal tea and you just bite into the seeds and it's really crunchy and stuff it's just like a change in texture but um i finished it recently because it's been like two months and i you take like three teaspoons or something like that per cup or something i don't know i only put like one teaspoon because i'm not super into sweet stuff but the jar is super cute, so that's why I wanted to show it, but it didn't show for very long because of how sped up the process is. Um, but yeah, the jar was super cute. I think I really love collecting jars because I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I have eight right now jars that I use for painting because I'm super lazy to go and switch out water. So I have eight jars of water just ready to go. Right now they're all filled so I have to go empty them but because I like painting at my desk and I hate getting up especially when I'm filming so I like to have all my jars just there so I can swap it out when I need to change water. Uh, which I did today because I switched from working on Kaya's darker outfit and then I worked a little bit onto the flowers. So I didn't want the colors to mix because of my water being muddy. Because that would be bad if I mix the blue and the oranges together and I'm stuck with like a brown. But now you can see I'm working a little bit with the line work and it kind of helps give the definition to the flowers that I think I was missing. Obviously with the line work, it's not as delicate, but I feel like it gives a nice whoa lisp nice graphic quality to it and kind of gives clarity which i think is kind of nice if i did like flowers for an entire background and only did a few with the lines i think that would have worked out the best but i didn't really want to go ahead and paint the whole thing with gouache just because i knew my patience with gouache is like gouache is very minimal so yeah we have about a minute left and yeah I don't know. Thank you guys very much for also keeping me company on streams and stuff. I know this is probably going to be posted right after another stream. So yeah, little surprise for you guys. And hopefully you guys really enjoy watching me work with gouache. So yeah. Oh, is this extra? I'll just end the video. Apparently I added extra stuff at the very end. But thank you very much for watching guys. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.